Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're checking out one of the most iconic and classic studio microphones of all time, the Neumann U87. Now technically what I have here is a U87AI, the modern version, but as we'll see there are very few differences between this and the vintage original. In any case, the U87 has been said to have been used on more recordings than just about any other microphone that's out there. It truly is a studio standard, a studio classic. In fact, there are those who would go so far as to say that in order to have a professional studio, you really need to have a U87 in your mic locker. And in fact, just the look of it, just those classic looks really define professional studio for many people. The U87 was introduced in 1967, and that's because Norman wanted to have a FET or solid state version of their Tube U67 microphone. The capsules in the two microphones are acoustically identical. We've got a K87 here inside the U87 and a K67 in the U67, and again, they're acoustically identical. The differences between them are just minimal. For example, the U87 doesn't require an external power supply. Uh, we've got three wires instead of four wires. We've got electrically isolated back plates and those sorts of things. Nothing that affects the acoustic performance of the microphone. And in fact, a couple of those things were changed back when they introduced the U87 AI in 1986. So speaking of, the U87 AI was the more modern version that was introduced in 1986. And again, there were minimal changes. In fact, it's the exact same capsule used in the U87 and the U87 AI. So there were just some differences in the circuitry. Now, for example, in the original U87, there were two 22.5 volt batteries inside a battery compartment inside the mic body. With the U87 AI, by that point, phantom power had been sort of standardized and stabilized, so those batteries were no longer required. They were removed, and they were replaced with a DC to DC converter instead. The upgraded electronics gave us a little bit lower noise floor, something like a 4 dB lower noise floor, as well as a bit more gain, up to like 6 dB more gain out of this microphone than the original U87. But the tonal differences between the microphones are really very minor. You may hear some people talk about how the differences between the originals or different generations of U87s, but really the only thing that changed is that the presence peak was repositioned from 8 kilohertz up to about 10 kilohertz, and that's a 2 dB presence peak, so it's not a huge difference. Like all of Norman's microphones, the U87 is assembled in a state-of-the-art clean room, a level 100 clean room it's called. And this is because they have to be extremely precise and even particles in the air can affect things. I mean, we're talking about very, very tiny little tolerances here. One example, the membrane of the capsule is separated from the back plates by just 40 microns or about the thickness of a human hair. The gold plating on that membrane is just 0 0.03 microns thick. That's about 120 atoms of gold thick, so extremely tight tolerances. And the assembly, the tolerances, and the consistency of these microphones is so high that there's no need to purchase a matched pair. Any two U87s are so close in their tolerances and their precision that you can actually grab any two of them, even that are years apart, and they'll be close enough matched to be considered a stereo matched pair. That's pretty incredible. So where do we use the U87? Pretty much anywhere. You can consider this the workhorse of the recording studio. Of course, everyone knows this as a vocal microphone, but it's fantastic on piano, on electric guitar, on brass, on toms. The great Bruce Swedeen used U87s on tom toms all the time. You can also use it as a drum overhead. You'll see them in front of orchestras. You'll see them as spot mics in orchestras. In fact, there's an orchestral miking technique called the Mercury Living Presence Technique that uses three U87s in omni mode, equally spaced in front of the orchestra. So what do we have here? We have a one inch diaphragm and we have extremely flat frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now there are three polar patterns, omni, cardioid, and figure of eight. Each one has a very slightly different frequency response. With the cardioid mode, we have that presence boost that starts somewhere around 6 kilohertz and goes up to about 10 kilohertz, and after that the highs start to roll off very, very gently. It's about a 2 dB presence boost there. On the low frequencies, they start to roll off somewhere around 60 hertz, just a little bit. But again, we're ruler flat through the vast majority of the frequency range of the U87. And this makes it great for such a wide range of different sources. When we switch to the Omni pattern, it flattens out the low frequency response even more. We get a little less of a roll off there. And that high frequency boost or presence boost starts a little bit lower at about 5 kilohertz. When we go to figure of eight polar pattern, we get a little bit more of a low frequency roll off starting at about 120 hertz that again kind of gently rolls off from there and we get a broader, more gentle presence peak on the top end. So there are slight differences of the tone when you're in those different polar patterns, but having those three polar patterns available makes this an extremely versatile microphone. The versatility is also increased because we have a 10 dB pad. 
The microphone itself will handle up to about 117 dB max SPL when you engage that 10 dB pad. Now the max SPL goes up to 127 dB. The U87 is a very quiet microphone which makes it great for delicate sources and that's where you get all that detail and all that clarity that this microphone is renowned for. Just 12 dB of self noise from this microphone and about 82 dB again A weighted of signal to noise ratio. I mentioned that the mic's frequency response rolls off just a little bit on the bottom end. You can also tailor that bottom end with a low frequency filter that's built in as well and that'll drop that down if you have problems with rumble or you're getting too much low frequency response from the microphone itself. The only other detail to mention is that the U87AI is available in two colors. You can get it in nickel like we have here, which is sort of what I think of as the standard Narmon finish, or you can also go with a black finish as well. Either way, it's a beautiful microphone. But of course, what really matters is how it sounds. Let's put it up in front of Nick DiVirgilio and listen to some vocals, and then we'll have Nick break out his ukulele, and we'll listen to him play that through the U87 as well. Hey, 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 oh, oh, oh. Singing a song with my friends on the microphone. Hey, 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 hey. Singing a song, singing a song. Oh, oh, oh. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Neumann U87, or the U87 AI in this case. Fantastic microphone, it's a studio standard for a very good reason. And it's also been in production for nearly 60 years for very good reason. And that's because it's so versatile, that clarity, the dynamic response, the detail, the flat frequency response, its ability to cover a wide range of sources, it makes a great centerpiece for any studio's mic locker. In fact, you've been hearing the U87 on my voice throughout this video. It also makes a great broadcast mic and a great voiceover mic. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.